if you don't want to answer this, we can turn it off, but this wasn't the first time that a film crew had followed your family, or are you, right. are you okay? Oh, totally. about it? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. wasn't sure. So could, could you talk about that, um, the, this film crew that, that followed your family? For yeah, you? yeah, so uh, about, uh, I guess it was, oh my God, almost 11 years ago now, um, in 2007, uh, my family was featured on CNN's Black in America. And so it was wild because that was like my family's first brush with like show business, if you will. <laughs> and so uh, CNN like sent uh, camera crews down and they followed my family around for uh, a few months actually. It was, it was pretty crazy. Like at one point like there were, there were camera crews following me around in college, which was weird. It was weird. And at the time I had no babe skills. <laughs> But when you're walking you around and you got cameras around, <laughs> suddenly you're like, okay, yeah, oh, yeah. right, right? <laughs> and so um, <laughs> so that, that whole process was like really, uh, it was pretty fun actually. Um, but like there was, a, and there, there's a part in the documentary where it, where it brings that up, where it, like just the irony of the fact, because my mother's a juvenile judge, uh, my dad was super high up in the school district in Arkansas. And my brother's an attorney, and I was, at the time, uh, I would want to be a musician. That's what I wanted to do. So I was playing music and playing shows and stuff like that. And then suddenly you've got this this guy who, uh, you know, goes to prison uh, basically for, you know, uh, goes on trial for shooting somebody. You know, that's pretty wild. Um, pretty, it's like, how did that happen, you know? And so, uh, like, they, uh, that was kind of I, I think actually in hindsight, I think that was kind of like the first instance where I was like, oh, that is pretty weird that, you know, like you've got these uh, pretty respectable, upstanding parents. Uh, they have three kids, two of them kind of go a more, uh, go this way and one of them goes like that way. And uh, that was kind of one of the first times where I, I realized that that situation was interesting or unique or there was potential there. And so, uh, you know, I, I guess if CNN found it interesting, I was like, oh, okay, I guess that might be interesting. So maybe I should look into that. And so, uh, so it is fascinating, like years later, to kind of look um, and realize, like, oh yeah, that thing that they were kind of, the kind of uh, that resonated with them, uh, you know, has has been my story my whole life. And I, that was the first time where I kind of realized, like, oh, that is pretty different. That's like a Kind of a twist, something I could I could use, and uh, you know at the time it, it was weird too because my brother was in a in a place where he wasn't open with with that particular instance that occurred. Now he's pretty open about it and he'll talk about it. But at, I know at the time, uh, like all the controversy surrounding that because when that uh, when my brother uh, basically shot someone in in Arkansas, uh, he he did not kill them. They didn't die. They're uh, they're alive and well. Uh, they like that was like really controversial at the time in my small hometown where I'm from. And so at the time he didn't want to talk about it at all. Uh, now he's he's fine to you know he, he's owned up to it and things like that. Like he's he's fine now. But uh, but at the time I I remember there was a, a lot more tension in my family when we were filming the the CNN thing than there was now. Like when we shot, then there was Joe. Because at that point, uh, we we kind of just knew that like, yeah, that that's that's what that's my brother's lifestyle, that's what he does. And so I was able to sort of see it more objectively, you know, ten years later than at the time. Because at the time I was just mad at him. So and sometimes when you're mad it's really difficult to see anything objectively. I think when you're when you're angry, you can't see anything objectively. And so later on, uh, the anger, I think, turned more into just pain. And pain, to some extent, is more objective than, than anger, I think. Because uh, you can have a wound, and you're like, man, this really hurts. Why does it hurt? But when you're angry, you're like, this hurts, I hate everything, you know? And that's really difficult to, uh, to objectively begin the healing process when you're angry so yeah how many people saw that new story and how long was the piece that they did uh the piece was well i i know they did like three i think they did three segments they did like the black man uh the black family and then the black something else but my but my dad was basically this 
like the main subject in The Black Man. Uh, and that was the, I think the first one that ran, it was an hour piece that they ran. And the, uh, what was the other question? Oh, do you know how many people saw that? Um, it was, I know it was in the millions. Um, I don't know how many millions I've heard. Like uh, my dad can sometimes embellish things, <laughs> and, and and he said I I think he said like like twenty five million people had seen it, but I do know for a fact that uh, that like at one point uh, after it aired, we got a message from one of our family friends in Cairo. She was in Cairo and saw it on TV, oh, and she wow. was like, "I'm looking at your dad on TV in Cairo." And I was like, "Whoa!" And that that was one of the the first times I was like, "Oh wait, people actually saw like." people saw that, <laughs> you know, because in my brain, like whenever, uh, I, I guess I always convinced myself, I was like, oh, no way's gonna see it, it's fine. You know, but like, I guess a lot of people did see it, which is pretty cool. So it's cool, and it, it's cool to have the camera, I'm sure, at your college. Mm -hmm. I mean, that sounds pretty interesting. It was pretty but, neat. <laughs> yeah, I gotta admit, that, that does sound cool. But then some of that fades, I'm sure, after a while. Did you ever feel like, well, I kind of wish some of this would go away? Or were you okay with that because there was a, a deeper meaning for wanting to do it? Yeah, um, it actually like faded away pretty quickly. Um, like, I mean, it seemed like there was all this hoopla and then it aired and it was over. And I was like, oh, okay, back to our normal lives. And like, it didn't, I didn't feel like there was like, I know, I've never had a moment where I'm like, no, no cameras, please, no cameras. You know, like, <laughs> it's never happened. <laughs> and like, so, so basically like after it was over, it was just like, oh, okay, now everything's back to normal. And, um, which I think was good. I think that was a good thing because, like, I, um, I think potentially as impressionable as I was, because I'm I'm 31 now and I was 21 then, or I was about to turn 20. Uh, I was about to turn 21. I think that if like the hoopla had continued, it may have gone to my head. Maybe I don't know. Uh, like just as impressionable as I was back then, but I'm so I'm kind of glad it didn't didn't seem to like the buzz didn't continue for a really long time so but not just go to your head i, I meant more like they know your personal story and oh. how, how is that because it's something you live with every day and your gotcha. family lives but to know that you could be going to the mall and there could be like oh my gosh that's the guy that i saw on cnn yeah what's what's weird is like i that that doesn't really ever bother me and i i don't know if i was just not born with that muscle in my brain but like you know, I, I guess my my story being being public doesn't really bother me because it's what happened, you know? Okay. Um, and I, I don't think CNN portrayed it in like a bad way. Sure. It was yeah. very objective. It was very like factual. I'm like, well, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty right. It's what happened. So, uh, and like my, my, my family's never really been one to like try to hide things. It's like, yeah, it happened. And so uh, I've I've always kind of I think I got that mostly from from my parents because my you know my my mom has just been a public figure for you know thirty five years and so like uh, my family at least in in Arkansas where I'm from is like frequently in the paper and on the news and things like that so uh, you know when some sort of controversy happens or something and it becomes public like we've always just been like yeah that that happened and. You know, this is what we can learn from it, and this is how we move on. And so, I guess, I guess when I'm talking about this now, I think it kind of primed me for, you know, making. Then there was Joe, because it's like it was a. I know that there are some segments of my family that did not want me to tell a story about my family at all, because I, I do think a. And, and you know, there's there's some valid, there's some validity to it, like where. You know, uh, there's some shame sometimes associated with things, and and if you're not over that shame, you don't want people, you know, shining lights and cameras on your shame. You know, uh, but fortunately, I I think that I was able to look at it pretty objectively, and so was my brother, and so when we actually made the film, it kind of felt kind of felt like, yep, we're just like we're just exercising our demons here. It's all we're doing, nothing to see. You know. And uh, I think that that was like the best way to, to tell that story in particular. And it's, it's, it's given me a lot of bravery to face other areas of my life that I perhaps looked upon with shame to just be like, nope, we all have, we all have, uh, you know, there's one in every family type thing, you know, and like we all have pain, we all have brokenness. And if 
we can stand up and sort of like offer that to the world in a way where other people can experience it. Like I've, I've only found that good things happen with that. 